the solar panels that we are, are creating, that we are developing, are actually the thickness of a human hair or less. Here at NASA, we're working on thin film solar arrays for our spacecraft. As the name suggests, they're very thin, very low mass, very low volume. So these thin film solar panels, to date, we've made them all by hand. We call it touch labor, um, which as you can imagine, gets very expensive and it's hard to do in, in very large areas. So this project, we call it PAPA, Print Assisted Photovoltaic Assembly. And our thought was, uh, can we use robotics um, and 3D printing to go and assemble these thin film solar panels to both lower cost, get rid of all that touch labor, uh, and enable very large scale production. The idea really came from work in solar sails, uh, S-A-I-L. So solar sails are very large scale, very thin, very lightweight membrane that we actually use to uh, propel spacecraft. We actually sail uh, off of the momentum of photons reflecting off of the surface. Okay, and as we were working on these solar sails, we realized with advancements in thin film solar cells, now C-E-L-L, -L, uh, that there was a natural marriage there that we can embed these thin flexible solar cells onto these very large scale thin solar sails and make uh, a very large, completely thin film, low mass solar panel for our spacecraft. In the beginning, this was just an idea. And you're sort of taking a step into the unknown, something that hasn't been done before. And so there was a lot of experimentation to really get it up and running. And this was a Friday project. We set every Friday aside to come and work on it. And it became a fun thing to come and do. And you know, each Friday, it felt like we, you know, kind of one of those two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. Um, but slowly but surely, we, we started working through each of the problems and uh, eventually came out the other side. Two really main advantages of these thin film solar panels come at two ends of the spectrum. So if you go to the very small, uh, small spacecraft, you know, a satellite the, the size of a loaf of bread, and you think about putting thick film solar panels on it, um, you can't fit a lot on there. By the time you fold them up, put them into the volume, you've eaten up all of your resources and don't have much for the payload, the, the thing you want to go and do. So uh, by shrinking that solar panel, lower mass, lower volume, it enables us to go and do more from these small spacecraft. Now coming to the other end, the very, very large, when you think about making a solar panel, uh, you know, we can dream a little bit and say the size of a football field or 10 football fields, right? Uh, doing that with thick films becomes structurally very difficult. I think right now we're still in uh, the R&D phase. We've come out with our first working assemblies. Uh, these are fully printed, fully automated, um, assembled, and then taken over to a solar simulator, tested, confirmed working. We folded them up, unfolded them, tested them again uh, without any degradation. And we've started putting them into some thermal shock. Uh, with all these materials laid up on each other, we want to make sure that coefficient of thermal expansion, that there's nothing uh, that's going to delaminate, peel, crack, break. Um, and they survive through that thermal shock. We currently have samples going up to the International Space Station, uh, which will uh, essentially be put outside of the International Space Station for a year, exposed to the environment. They'll come back down and we'll study how did they degrade, did they act as we thought they would. I think this lays the groundwork uh, for what could be really revolutionary, and that's in-space manufacturing of solar panels. And so right now we're using COTS or commercial off-the-shelf thin film solar cells in our process. So we buy the solar cells from a, a terrestrial company and we're actually using a robotic arm to incorporate them into our process. Um, what would be very powerful uh, is if we could then go and actually print that solar cell. So right now we're printing all the stuff around a cot solar cell. If we could actually print that solar cell itself, then we have a fully printed solar panel that we could say uh, if we're on a lunar base or we have our mission to Mars or eventually deeper into space, we can print stuff on demand. You know, if we have a solar panel that gets damaged, uh, we need more power for, for some other experiment. Uh, or simply put, we're just up there long enough where we're starting to degrade in the space environment. We could on demand then print uh, a new solar panel to, to accommodate those extra power needs. 
Um, and I think that could be really enabling for longer term deep space missions.